everyone unto my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's good to be here with you today. I recognize Pastor. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. The first lady of like, the gospel. The sister brother. God bless you. Minister Davis. Sister Davis. Amen. To you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I, most of all, I'd like to thank God for my wife. I thank God for blessing me with a good wife that supports a husband. Right. It's right. good to have someone to stand by you. Amen. Because when you own the battlefield for the Lord, well. you need a helpmate to understand right. that God come first well. Well. in your life. I'm second to God. So it is a blessing today. I'm going to move on along. Time been well spent. I won't hold you long. But if you are tuning in with us on the internet or by television, we are in Tacoma, Washington. And Pastor John Rutland is the pastor of Faith Gospel. Today's scripture will be coming from Equitus 32. Equitus 32. And I will be reading from the King James Version. Equitus 32, verse 26. And if you are able to stand, please stand in the reverence to God's word. Amen. And if you are not able to stand, it will be quite all right. Today's scripture, Equitus 32, 26, King James Version reads as printed. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of the Levite gathered themselves together unto him. You may be seated. The word of God says, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who, he asked a question today, is on the Lord's side. Let us come unto me, all ye son of Levi, gather themselves together unto him. Let's use for a thought today. It is in a form of a question. All right, man. Who is on the Lord's side? All right, All right man. man. Yeah. Who is on the Lord's side? We see in the scripture today, faith gospel, Moses is the speaker. It is the time of judgment among the children of Israel. Well, Something had to transpire, my brothers and sisters, in order for Moses to ask the question to the people, mm -hmm. who is on the Lord's side? Something had to go terribly wrong for this to occur. We see by the word of God and by the aid of the Holy Spirit, God has chosen the Israelite to be his treasure, to be his holy people. He had entered into a treaty with them and had established a relationship 
with them, my brothers and sisters. He had given them the Ten Commandments. Finally, he had called Moses up to the top of Mount Sinai in order to give him details, instructions, and how the Israelites should live their lives as God holy people. But now, my brothers and sisters, we see that the Israelites had to wait 40 days and 40 nights. How many of us today, my brothers and sisters, get impatient with the Lord and we turn our back on him? But the Israelites did not wait on God, my brothers and sisters. This is, they did not continue to hope in God. Instead, they grew impatient. They ignored the first command and made a false image to worship. At the same time, God was reaching out to the Israelites by giving Moses instructions for how to live. The Israelites were breaking their covenant, my brothers and sisters. Their treaty with God by disobeying the first commandment. They created an image similar to the gods of their neighbor, a calf. Not only did the Egyptian worship cows and bulls, my brothers and sisters. But the bull was also a well-known symbol of worship of Baal in Canaan. Israel worshiped this new false image along with worship of the living God. They were guilty of sickness Criticism. That is blending the worship of false God with the worship of a true God. Right. Yeah. Tragically, my brothers and sisters, they abandoned the living God uh -huh. for a false God. Yeah. At the very time God was reaching out to them. I stop by today to tell you and ask you a question, faith gospel. Who is on the Lord's side? All right. All right. Who is on the Lord's side? How to get on the Lord's side? All right. My brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us to be ye separate from the world. Be removed from the world and do not love the world. Because the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, my brothers and sisters, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. How can I get on the Lord's side? Right. We have, have done intensive study in our Bible study about Moses and the children of Israel. Today, my brothers and sisters, we are going to dig just a little bit deeper and to tell us how we can get on the Lord's side. The Bible says, be transformed from this world. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is the reasonable service. The Bible says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. All right. That ye may prove 
what is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of God. Amen. Who is on the Lord's side? How can I get on the Lord's side? Do not partake of things in this world, my brothers and sisters. Just as Moses asked the question, there was a question of separation. And that is the same question being asked today. The Bible said, wherefore if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as thou living in the world are ye subject to ordinance? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using after the commandment and doctrine of men. All right. We should get on the Lord's side Amen. because God is asking us a question today. Who is on the Lord's side? A lot of people think that they are on the Lord's side, but you are not truly on the Lord's side. We should deny this world its power. The Bible says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present, in this present world. Who is on the Lord's side? Well, well, yeah. Moses asked that question. It was a question of separation. Uh -huh. It was a question of judgment. Uh -huh. It was a question of sanctification. Yeah. It was a question of destroying the one who was not on the Lord's side. All right, all right. My brothers and sisters, we should be mindful that to be on the Lord's side, uh -huh. live and believe in Christ for eternal life. The Bible said, and Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth yeah. in me shall never die. Yeah. Believeth thou this. She say unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ for the Son which come into the world. When you are on the Lord's side, you have Jesus as your personal Savior. When you have God in your life, you will be a different person. Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Then you are on the Lord's side. Preacher, can you tell me how can I get on the Lord's side? The true believer in Christ are the royal priests for the Lord today. The Bible said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a particular people, that ye shall show forth the praise of him who have called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Who is on the Lord's side. But many today 
my brothers and sisters, mm. such as pastors, preachers, well, well, teachers, well, Christians, well, sure. they have the same excuse that Aaron had because they gave in to the will of the people instead of giving in to the will of God. The Christian remains the same faith gospel who is on the Lord's side. That is the question. I can see the approach of Moses turn the dancing into trembling. They were exposed to shame by their sins. Of course, Moses took the road away to reproach was not concealing sin, but putting a false color on it by punishing it. We should be very mindful today, my brothers and sisters, that the world is on its own agenda instead of God's agenda. Such as many of the children of Israel, we see that in this wicked world today. They have taken prayer out of schools. They have dismissed the Pledge of Allegiance in our schools because the name of God is included. They want to take out in God we trust off of the dollar bill because they want to try to wipe God permissively out of everything. They have taken the Ten Commandments out of our judicial system. Congress, the government, the legislative department condone same-sex marriages, which is an abomination unto God. But the question still remains the same. The word of God is asking us today. And the word of God is asking someone who is tuning in on the internet. Who is on the Lord's side. All right. yeah, go ahead. Say that. We see today Moses was not dealing with the worldly people. Same as us today. Moses was dealing with God's chosen people, the same as us today. But when the people of God will not stand, they are the ones that supposed to be an example to the world. Many church leaders have fooled and lied to so many, teaching and preaching false doctrine, leading weak-minded Christians and sinners astray. a prayer clock <laughs> instead of putting their faith in a man named Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Telling them to purchase some spring water or some vial of water and drink that this can give you some holy water hey, hey, and hey, then hey, you hey. expect a blessing that will never come. Yeah. Who is on the Lord's side? Well, God has a 
solution. I stop by today to tell you that they are only deceiving their own selves. Reckoning day is coming, my brothers and sisters, when some of these so-called preachers, teachers, Christian leaders is going to bust hell wide open. Preacher, can you tell me how can I get on the Lord's side? Right, Lord. Well, I stopped by today to tell you, faith gospel. Uh -huh. In order to get on the Lord's side, mm -hmm. one has to separate themselves from the ungodly. Right. Such as Moses asked the question. Yeah. This was a question of separation, yeah. faith gospel. To identify who is on the Lord's side. God, faith gospel, is asking the same question today. Who is on the Lord's side? Preacher, can you tell me when I am on the Lord's side? When you stand for the Lord and you have no shame and no regret standing on the Lord's side. Tell this dying world, my brothers and sisters, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Preacher, can you tell me how do I know when I'm on the Lord's side? When you stop hoeing around on God and put him first in your life. What do you mean, preacher? That is when you stop putting your curriculum at before the Lord. You should be willing to give the Lord your reasonable time. Whatever is keeping you from serving God and coming to the church house is your stumbling block. Who is on the Lord's side? When you put the Lord first in your life above all else, when you put First, before the Lord, when you, God is waiting because you're supposed to give him your time. You're supposed to give God your talent. You're supposed to give God your treasures. And you're supposed to give God your praise. Amen. Who Amen. is on the Lord's side? When you stand, faith gospel, flat feet for the Lord. And you do not waver from trusting in the Lord. Yeah. As the priests did, my brothers and sisters, yeah. in the middle of the Jordan River. Yeah. Stand flat feet for the Lord. Yeah. Then you know that you are on the Lord's side. Right, right. When the Lord is first in your life and nothing else matters, then you know that you are on the Lord's side. When you stop getting your party on, and when you stop getting your groove on with the world, and start getting, getting your party, your praise, and your groove on with God, then you know that you are on the Lord's side. When, my brothers and sisters, when you stop raising all kind of hell, then you know you are on the Lord's side. When, my brothers and sisters, you stop making excuses and make God your all in all, then you know, my brothers and sisters, you are on the Lord's side. My brothers and sisters, when you stop keeping your money Stop deep in your pockets and say, I'm not going to get it. I am going to keep it and do and buy me some clothes, some booze, some alcohol, or whatever you're going to buy instead of getting it to the law. You need to remember, God gave you the money in the first place. It is not yours, but his. He is the one who allowed you to have it in the first place. When you can untangle your mind and un 
understand this and be obedient to support your church house and not be deceived by lying people by trying the spirit by the spirit then you are on the Lord's side. When you learn how to forgive your fellow man then you are on the Lord's side. When you stop being a stiff neck and rebellious, then you are on the Lord's side. Is there anybody here today, faith gospel? Are you on the Lord's side? If you own the Lord's side, does it say yay? Yeah. Who is on the Lord's side? Yeah. <laughs> 